Hello once again. In today's video I've got a cool vintage telephony device to show you guys. This is a Panasonic model KX-F250, uh, as they call it, a telephone answering system with facsimile. This is an all-in-one device for the uh, home office or business. It is first a fax machine, second a telephone, and third a semi-solid state answering machine. Uh, and this was made in 1993. I found this on shopgoodwill.com and I got it for the starting price, five bucks, plus shipping, which was only $11, so $16. When I got this thing, it was filthy. I've put a lot of time in cleaning it, but it, it, it was just, uh, the dirt just seems to just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. Um, but it's, it's looking a lot better than it was. Um, the hook switch on the telephone, it had an issue where when the handset was on the hook, it still thought the handset was off the hook. I thought this was just a dirty hook switch, and in fact, if you follow me on Twitter, that's what I said it was, but that was just me t saving time. Um, what was actually wrong was... The hook switch uh, wasn't dirty, but I guess the switch itself probably has bent out of shape over time. And the switch has to be pressed down further than it used to be, probably, um, to close the switch. So how I ended up fixing that was I managed to open this up. And I took a... Uh, it was convenient that the switch was in a flat rectangular shape, the switch itself. I took a piece of scotch double-sided tape and put it down on that switch and that raised the switch up enough that now when the hook switch is pressed down it uh, it closes the switch. So that fixed that issue. And then the final issue was that the uh, answering machine, this uses a micro cassette based answering machine. I call it semi-solid state because the uh, outgoing message, the message that you record to say, to tell callers to leave a message, that's actually recorded digitally. Um, it's, it's recorded in a digital fashion onto a memory chip. And in fact, it says right here, IC recordable chip microcassette system. So that's for the outgoing message, but the incoming messages are recorded on a micro cassette tape. And take a look at this. This came with the original Panasonic MC30 micro cassette. The uh, micro cassette uh, drive, uh, the belt was actually broken uh, when I opened it up and I was able to remove the mechanism. It wasn't very hard to do. Um, the belt was there, but it was broken. It wasn't like gooey or degraded or anything. It was just literally snapped, which I find kind of odd, but I found a belt that was close enough to the right size to work, and now the answering machine works. So now everything on this works. So I'm really happy. And I've been using this thing, and I like this so much that if you look over here, it's actually replaced everything that I had over here. Um, my Northern Telecom M9316 phone, my AT&T answering machine, um, which I never got around to making a video of. This has replaced all of those. I really like this thing. And it's, and it's nice and it makes things nice and neat and tidy because it's an all-in-one machine. So it, it sits over there and uh, I really, really like it. I've been really excited to make this video, not only because this is a neat device, but also because I've never done a video about fax before. And uh, it's something I've, I've been wanting to, wanting to cover for quite a while. Some of my viewers probably probably have never used a fax machine. Maybe the youngins who watch this stuff don't even know what faxing is. Um, so that's, that's something I'm going to be covering in this video. Um, but first, let's just, let's just take a look at this thing. This thing is really, really cool. I particularly like, it's a random thing, but I really like the design of the handset. It's really chunky. I really like it. This is actually really similar to the handsets on the uh, Toshiba, uh, Toshiba Strata DKT 2000 series phones. We have a couple of those at work. And the, the handset's very similar, but I really like how chunky it is. Kind of heavy too. Here it says Panasonic, and it's got what I assume is a part number on it. 
You've got a loudspeaker right here. Oh, I get to put back the uh, little piece of paper. Oop. I get to put back the little piece of paper that goes here. So there's a little piece of paper goes. Normally you would write uh, your own phone number on this. There's the loudspeaker there. It's used for ringing and also for hands-free. This uh, the telephone is hands-free capable in this. Over here you have controls for the telephone. So there's volume switch. Uh, that's for the uh, loudspeaker for uh, hands-free use and also when you're listening to messages on the answering machine. Next switch over, that's the uh, handset volume. You get three settings. Next over is the ringer volume, low or high, or you can turn it right off. And then the dialing mode, tone dialing or pulse dialing. Which now seems weird, but when this machine was made in 1993, um, it wasn't entirely out of the ordinary for some places to still support only pulse dialing, which is what uh, rotary phones do. So if you needed uh, pulse dialing, because that's all your phone line supported, you just flip that switch, otherwise leave it on tone dialing. And then as I've already shown, this is where the uh, micro cassette drive for the answering machine resides. That's where all your incoming messages are recorded. Panasonic supplied you with a MC30 cassette. That's a 30 minute cassette. It records 15 minutes on each side. But you did have Panasonic's blessing to use an MC60 cassette if you needed longer recording time. So right there it says for best results, use Panasonic MC30 or MC60. Of course, you can use any brand of micro cassette you want. Looking at the control panel here, here you have your controls for the answering machine. The answering machine can also be used to record calls. That's where it says two-way recording. And it can serve as just a general uh, a dictation recorder if you want to record a note using your answering machine when you're not on a call hit this button and you can just use the uh, hands-free microphone to make a recording you got your transport controls for the uh, micro cassette as well you can play the whole cassette if you want to or just play any new messages that have come in that's a little green LED that'll light up when you have new messages you can rewind fast forward and kind of a neat feature on this thing if you want to erase the entire cassette all at once you just press this and it rewinds the tape with the erase head engaged so it erases the entire cassette or the entire side of the cassette quite quickly it starts from wherever the tape currently is so if you want to erase the entire tape you have to fast forward it all the way first and then hit ICM erase ICM stands for incoming message and you've got your Dial pad, pause, flash, redial, uh, standard telephone functions. There's your uh, speakerphone function, so that enables the hands free. It also serves as voice standby. Voice standby is a feature that only works if you were calling another com another fax machine that also had voice standby feature so it's one of those features that it only works across compatible machines but what it is is while you're sending a fax or receiving a fax perhaps you want to have a conversation with the other party after the fax transmission is completed so you just hit voice standby and it'll make the other party's fax machine do a distinctive ring that says hey once the fax transmission is completed the other party wants to speak to you so once the faxing is all done voice standby will I think it automatically activates the uh, uh, hands-free speakerphone or you can lift the receiver and then have a voice conversation on the same call over the same line so you don't have to wait for the fax to finish and then you have to pick up the phone again and dial the number again um, so it saves you there if the other machine also had the same functionality so that's kind of neat. You also have a mute button, which works not only for the speakerphone, but it does work with the handset. And I like that a lot. I like telephones that give you a mute for the handset. Not all of them do. Uh, my uh, Northern Telecom M9316 doesn't even do it. But this thing does, and I really like that. You've got 12 programmable memory keys here for programming telephone or fax numbers. 
And then you've got your fax control keys here. If you want to start faxing someone, you dial the telephone number and then hit the start button. Copy. This thing can actually serve as a super low quality photocopier. If you need to make a copy of something and you're okay with it being black and white and really low quality, um, this will serve your purpose as well. You've got some indicator lights here. Um, you have a paper out light for if, uh, if it's trying to print something but you're out of paper. And an alarm light which lights up usually when uh, something is jammed. Either the uh, document feeder or the printer has uh, encountered a jam. That'll light up and it'll sound a beep as well. This help button is kind of unique. I haven't seen this before. Um, just press this button and the printer prints out a little help page showing you some uh, basic functions. That's kind of cool. Polling and transmit settings. Those are fax features that I will be going over later in the video. Light original. So if you're copying or faxing something that has really light print on it, just hit this button, the light lights up, and it'll make the print uh, darker than it otherwise would be. Handy to have. Your resolution for when you're copying or faxing something. Standard fine, super fine, or half tone. Half tone means that it's capable of doing grayscale. All the other resolutions, things are either black or white. And then receive mode. So you can use this thing in various modes depending on what you want to use it for. The default mode is answer slash fax. So what that means is when a call comes in, uh, if you don't pick up the receiver, the answering machine will answer the call and begin playing the outgoing message and the party can leave a message. Or if it picks up the line and plays the outgoing message, it's actually listening on the line. And if it hears a fax machine at the other end of the line, um, it will automatically switch to fax mode and begin receiving the fax. That's really cool. So very handy to have. It's all automated, whether it's a person calling or another fax machine calling. This thing can automatically handle the call appropriately. Very, very nice. In the other three modes, the answering machine is disabled. In tell slash fax mode, um, when you call the machine, um, the machine will actually immediately pick up the line, but this is really interesting. It'll pick up the line, but the caller will still hear ringing, but it'll be a different kind of ringing. It's kind of a kind of tone. Um, and the reason for that, the machine immediately picks up the line because if it happens to be a fax machine calling, it'll immediately switch to fax reception mode. If it is a person calling, they'll hear the modified ring back tone, and this thing will start ringing until you pick up the receiver. So that's kind of interesting. It immediately picks up the line. The call's immediately in process, but it sends its own ring back tone to the caller. I thought that was kind of cool. Next, there's fax only mode. So that's if you're using this as a dedicated fax machine. Uh, when the line rings, it'll immediately pick up and start uh, sending the fax reception tone, telling the calling fax machine, hey, I'm ready, send your fax. And then there's dedicated telephone mode. If you call this thing, it'll just ring, ring, ring until either you pick up the handset or the caller gives up and hangs up. It's telephone only. So that's very cool. Um, I think, you know, just for best use, answer slash fax mode is the best mode because you get all three. Somebody calls. If you don't pick up the handset, the answering machine answers. If it hears a fax machine, it switches to fax mode. If it doesn't, it uh, lets the caller leave a message or you can pick up the handset and talk to them. Very nice, very nice all-in-one machine designed quite conveniently. Looking on the right-hand side here, we have two latches to open up each end of the machine. So the front end opens up here, and this is the uh, document scanner. So uh, if there's a jam in the scanner, just open this up, remove the jam. You can also clean the uh, rubber rollers, three of them here. Oh, it thought I... It thinks I put a document in when you hit that switch. And this little window right here is where the CCD is that uh, scans the document. So, you have the opportunity to give this a clean too, which I definitely did. There's a row of green LEDs 
inside there that light up the document when it's scanning. And then when you open up this end, of course it'll scream at you for doing so. There is where your paper roll is. So this thing uses a thermal printer, which used to be common for fax machines. Now they all use plain paper. They're either still thermal printer based, but they use a thermal transfer ribbon to get ink onto the page. Or they might be inkjet based. Or in the case now, most fax machines being made now are not standalone. They're actually built into, into copier machines and printers. Um, so those will obviously just use whatever the printer is, either laser or inkjet or whatever. But this is old school. It's got a thermal printer. It takes an eight and a half inch long roll of thermal paper. And luckily you can still buy these and they're still quite cheap. So that's good. And uh, it just sits in there and it's kind of a two-handed job. Oop, still complaining. The thermal printing head is right here, that beige colored part. So that's a part that you should keep clean as well. And uh, then you close it and uh, you'll get to hear and see the printer in action for the first time. Once you close it, it feeds the paper a little bit. Now you may have, heard, may have heard that ripping sound. This thing actually has an automatic paper cutter. Of course the paper is one continuous roll, so it needs a way to be able to cut out, cut that out into individual sheets. So yeah, it has an automatic cutter that uh, cuts the sheets and that's really cool. And of course your document feeder. So uh, if when you want to copy or scan something, you take your sheet of paper. Let's say I want this side to be sent with the logo. You gotta put it face down. And although it doesn't matter which way around you put it, because at the end of the day it's gonna come out as a individual sheet, it does send the document from top to bottom if you put it in top in first. And it beeps. And you have these little guides here to push in to the uh, size of the paper. Now, there's supposed to be a cover, a decorative cover to uh, go around here, but uh, this one has been lost to the, uh, lost to time, but that's okay. It doesn't affect anything functionally. And uh, I guess I'll demonstrate the printer in this thing. I will make a copy of this. So I will uh, keep it in standard resolution and I'll just hit the copy button and it'll start going. And you'll hear two stepper motors going at the same time, which is fun. There it goes. And there you go. So the rubber rollers in the uh, document feeder aren't the best. So like the paper sticks at the very, very end and it uh, does that. And of course, being a roll of thermal paper, as you can see, it curls right the heck up. And the quality is generally poor just because it's a thermal printer. And this is very old thermal paper, but it still prints pretty good. There you can see. If I want to do half tone, same thing. Stick it in until it beeps. And I'll set the resolution to half tone, so this way we get a, we get one level of gray between white and black. And that got a bit weird at the bottom too. I might have to clean those, try and clean those rubber rollers a bit more. But there you can see the grayscale there. It represents it by uh, just printing out, printing, printing it out as, as dots instead of solid color. But 
there you go anyhow so that's a demonstration of the uh, of the printer and you'll see it more as we uh, demonstrate the fax machine so demonstrating the telephone um, in addition to the 12 direct selection memory keys, there's also a 100 number electronic phone book, or as Panasonic oddly calls in the manual, an electric phone book, or phone directory is their term. Um, oddly enough, we've got the display here. You can see it's got the day of the week, the month and day, the current time. It cannot get that automatically from the phone line. You have to put it in manually. And that's because this thing actually doesn't support caller ID, which is a little odd because caller ID was around by 1993. I suppose perhaps it wasn't completely commonplace yet. But yeah, no caller ID on this, which is why, if you look up here, I've got this thing. This is a uh, phone options caller ID box. I've known this thing my whole life. It was my parents. So back in, I don't know when this would be from, probably the mid 90s back when your area got caller ID but you didn't want to spend you wanted to take advantage of it but didn't want to spend the money on a caller ID capable phone which would have been quite expensive at that time you'd get one of these it plugs into the telephone line it runs on a 9 volt battery it's got a second cord coming out of it to plug your telephone into and it shows caller ID it shows the number it shows the name it shows the date and time that they called and it'll even keep a log of callers that you can look at and remove numbers as needed it's very handy and yeah all through the decades uh, multiple moves um, and my entire life this thing is still around still working and now I've stuck it on here because it's it's very useful because this thing doesn't have caller ID I can demonstrate the phone. I will call our local uh, uh, Environment Canada number to get a to listen to the weather forecast recording. Uh, put it on mute just because. Six three six four nine nine one. It's my local number. Welcome to Environment Canada's weather service. Bienvenue au service meteorologique d'Environnement Canada. Revised forecasts for New Brunswick issued at 8.22 p.m. Tuesday, December 31st for tonight, Wednesday, and Wednesday night. St. Stephen and Northern Charlotte County for tonight. Periods of snow mixed with freezing drizzle ending after midnight, then cloudy with 30% chance of flurries. If you pick up the handset, it automatically switches to the handset. If I want to go back to hands-free, just hit speakerphone. 30 kilometers per hour, passing to 50, becoming light near midnight. Winds becoming wet. Just press it again to hang up. Now, what does this thing sound like when it rings? Well, let me, uh, I can't call from my cell phone because I'm using my cell phone to film. But let me pull up my, uh, my uh, Google account and use the uh, Google phone to dial my number. So here's what the ringer sounds like. It's uh, quite loud even on the uh, low setting. It's very loud on the high setting. And if we look at my caller ID box, of course uh, Google Voice uh, doesn't give uh, any caller ID, but you can see it says private call and you can see the time and date. Now, as for the answering machine, as I mentioned, it is, I call it semi-solid state. The uh, incoming messages are recorded on the micro cassette, but uh, the outgoing message is recorded digitally. And uh, I can check my outgoing message just by pressing this button. Hi, you've reached Florence Mitchell. I'm unable to come to the phone right now, but please leave your name and... So there's that. I can re-record it if I need to. So how the incoming messages are recorded is that once they're recorded, um, you can obviously press new messages. It'll rewind the tape to where the message, the new messages begin, play them. Um, but once it's done playing them, it doesn't rewind the tape again. It actually leaves it in the same place, which I think is a nice system. So 
messages, regardless of whether they're new or not, they're recorded serially until you get to the end of the tape, at which point you have to either flip over the tape or rewind it. I think that's a good system because uh, the tape gets even wear. Um, my AT&T answering machine, which I never got around to making a video of, that, that's a micro cassette based answering machine. And if I get a message, it's recorded at the beginning of the tape. Once I listen to it, it rewinds the tape to the beginning. The next new message is recorded in the same place. And what happens is the beginning of the tape gets uh, re-recorded on over and over and over. And then that little portion of the tape gets worn the heck out. And your tape is ruined, even though the rest of the tape is fine. Or at least you'd have to flip it over to the B side. And, and then the same thing would happen there eventually. But with how this works, uh, wear on the tape is distributed across the entire tape, and I think that's a really good system. Um, let me demonstrate a memo recording, so I'll hit memo. And it now says memo recording. You can see the tape is moving. When I'm done, hit it again. And memos are counted as messages, so the in, uh, new message light is now blinking. If I want to listen to it, I can hit new messages. And it now says memo recording. You can see the tape is moving. When I'm done, hit it again. So it sounds the three beeps to mean that that's the end of the messages. And at this point, you have 10 seconds to either press new messages again, if you want to listen to the message again, or if you don't press anything, the 10 seconds expires, it beeps, the light goes out, and it's not counted as a new message anymore. But again, because of the serial fashion in which messages are recorded, you can rewind the tape manually, You can move the tape anywhere you want and play back the messages at any time. So messages are always available even after you've messaged uh, or even after you've listened to them until they get re-recorded over eventually. So that's a really nice system. I'm unable to come to the phone right now, but please leave your name and phone number after the beep, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. And something I really love about this thing, and it's uh, it's kind of funny, I've always wanted a Panasonic answering machine. Because Panasonic answering machines are the only answering machines that have that long, high-pitched beep um, uh, to signal to begin your, your message. And I just really love that. Um, it's kind of a sound of my childhood because um, it seems that TV shows, when I was a kid, whenever they used an answering machine, they used, uh, whenever they used an answering machine beep sound effect, they always used a, a Panasonic answering machine with that long, high-pitched beep. And so I, I have a really, uh, I, I, I'm really fond of, of, of uh, that you know, particular beep is kind of nostalgic for me. So it's really awesome now to have a, a Panasonic answering machine. Um, I, I just really, I really love it a lot. I, I just love that beep. I don't know what it, what it is about it. The answering machine doesn't sound the best. You can hear a ton of flutter in the recording, but, uh, I chalk that up to just two things. First of all, um, the belt, the new belt that I'm using is not the proper one. That might uh, contribute to it. Second thing is that this never would have been an exceptionally high quality micro cassette recorder in the first place. Uh, the only purpose of this thing is to record telephone messages. Telephone is already quite a low quality medium to transmit sound over, so the, the cassette recorder doesn't have to be high quality at all. It just has to do the job and that's definitely what it does. So this brings us to the fax machine portion. So for the people who might not know, what is fax? Well, 
Fax is an old but still used today in some industries uh, method of transferring documents electronically. We have email today, obviously. You can attach a, a file, PDF, whatever, and send it to another computer anywhere on the internet. But before email became as commonplace as it is now, we had fax for if you needed to send a document from one place to another, virtually anywhere in the world, really, really fast. Fax works over a telephone line. Uh, a modern fax machine like this one actually has a modem in it similar to a dial-up modem um, that used to be used to get on the internet for computers. You stick the document that you want to be faxed in, you dial the telephone number of the other party's fax machine. While this thing is dialing the remote fax machine, it makes a boop, boop sound to say, hey, I'm a fax machine and I want to send a fax. When the other fax machine picks up, it hears that beep, and then it screams down to the sending fax machine over the telephone line to say, hey, I'm also a fax machine and I'm ready to receive that fax. And then the sending fax machine begins feeding out the document and it screeches down the telephone line like an army of angry robots. And uh, the receiving fax machine hears that and it's able to reproduce the fax and print it out on its printer. The word fax, the word fax uh, is a short form of facsimile. Facsimile literally means a copy of. So you're sending a copy of the document. The machine converts the document that it reads into a set of uh, digitally encoded scan lines, basically. The modem converts those digital scan lines into a bunch of screaming. And then the receiving fax machine's modem converts that screaming back into scan lines, which it then prints out with the printer. Now the first um, real fax machines, the first standardized fax system uh, came out in the 1960s and it was actually analog. In these early fax machines, the document would actually be uh, put inside a drum and it would spin round and round in a drum and as it spun round and round, um, a sensor that could read, you know, whether it was seeing white or black basically would slowly go along and scan the document top to bottom and it would modulate a tone down the telephone line. Um, this might be backwards, but for example, it, the tone would be low when it saw dark spots and it would be uh, higher pitched when it saw light spots. So it, it was an analog system and it didn't really catch on that much. Um, there was an update to that system. The, the fir this first standardized system was called Group 1. In the 1970s, there was uh, a more refined version called Group 2. The first system could send a page in six minutes, so pretty slow. Uh, the revised system, Group 2, was still analog, but it was a lot faster. It could send a page in three minutes. And then in 1980, um, the Group 3 standard was created, which was a big milestone because Group 3 was digital. It made use of modems to digitally transmit the facts. And Group 3 is actually what we still use today. This is a Group 3 fax machine. It was a lot faster. Early Group 3 machines could transmit a page in to, uh, a minute or two. Modem speeds have increased since then, however. The initial Group 3 standard specified speeds between 2400 bit per second and 9600 bit per second. Um, and machines that supported the faster speeds were backwards compatible with the slower speeds. Um, but also the speed range was because um, if uh, a fax transmission was happening over a poor quality telephone line, uh, the two fax machines, when they were handshaking, could negotiate down to a slower speed if it was necessary to sustain a reliable transmission over a crappy telephone line. In later years, especially into the 90s, faster speeds were created all the way up to, in 1998, 33.6 kilobits per second, which can transmit uh, a page in as little as six seconds. Oddly though, despite these great advancements in speed, um, the original standard always remained the biggest standard, the, ni the 2400 to 9600 bit per second. The vast majority of Group 3 fax machines, regardless of age, uh, only support up to 9600 bit per second. This is a 9600 bit per second machine. I've got another fax machine, a brother from the mid 2000s, 
Um, it's also a 9600 bit per second machine, despite the 33.6K standard having been around since 1998. So it's kind of funny how very few machines were ever designed to take advantage of the faster speeds. Group 3 also introduced different resolutions that you could choose from. Standard resolution is 100 scan lines per inch. Fine resolution is 200 scan lines per inch. And then later came the super fine standard, and that's 400 scan lines per inch. Although this particular machine was made before Superfine became uh, standardized. So on this particular machine, the Superfine resolution is only effective when transmitting to another Panasonic fax machine that supports Superfine resolution. So the only standardized resolutions on this are standard and fine. And then of course Halftone is the same resolution as standard, but it's able to use dithering to create grayscales. And then later in the 80s, the ITU came out with the Group 4 fax standard. It was for ISDN lines, and it never caught on. So Group 3 has always been the, the biggest standard and the only standard still in use today. A fax machine made this year in 2020 will have no problem communicating with this fax machine from 1993, and even earlier machines going back to 1980, as long as they uh, support the Group 3 standard. It's pretty cool, such an old technology still being used today. So how about we actually get to demonstrating the uh, fax functionality? Now, uh, the nice thing about fax is that there's no, you know, there's you don't have to subscribe to some service or whatever. It's a peer-to-peer -peer telephone call. It's just a telephone call. And so as long as you have a landline, and it doesn't have to be an old school landline over an actual uh, p old school POTS line, as, as long, even um, voice over IP service, fax machines will work just fine. My landline that I have here is uh, based on VoIP service, and this thing has absolutely no problem. So I am going to fax a number that Hewlett Packard, of all people, makes available, and it's very, very nice. It's the HP Fax Back service, um, and basically you fax, you fax to it one page, any page, it doesn't matter, and as long as that page is received successfully, a few minutes after you send it, uh, the HP Fax Back service will call you back and send you a page and so, uh, thus demonstrating that your fax machine is working correctly. They've had this service active for 15 or 20 years now, and it's still active today, which is really great of them. So, we stick our document in. I'm just going to send it at the standard resolution. The phone number is uh, 1888 HP Fax Me, which is 473 2963. And then we hit start. It says dialing, transmit, and I find recently the uh, HP Faxback service has been kind of finicky, like their fax machine or computer or whatever it is will pick up and then it'll hang up or it'll pick up and it just won't sound the reception tone. And it looks like that might be what's happening right now because it says sending, but our document is not. Oh, no, it failed. It's printing out a failure report. Oh no, it's printing out the journal. Okay. There, uh, every so many faxes or so many days, I forget, it prints out a, uh, it prints out a journal, a record of all the faxes that have been sent and whether they were successful or not. And yeah, it failed. Oh, it's dialing again. So if it tries to send a fax and the fax fails, um, uh, it'll automatically redial after a minute or two. It'll just keep trying over and over until you hit stop. Ah, there we go. It's finicky, but I tried a few times and managed to, uh, I think I managed to get a hold of it this time. So it's feeding it through. Sending it along. Oh, 
All right. It's continuing to send the data. It has a small memory buffer, so it's able to slightly buffer the uh, document. All right. And we're printing a transmit report. And notice something I like about this thing, it really conserves paper because it doesn't print out an entire letter size sheet. Um, just for something short like this, it actually, it only prints out as much as it needs, but there we go. And it was sent okay. Now we just wait for it to uh, call back. Something I forgot to mention is, um, I did mention about how the uh, document feeder is supposed to have a cover here, but that's missing on this unit. Um, but it's also missing a back plane for the printer. Oh, there's our fax coming in. The answering machine answered and then it immediately heard the fax tone. It says receiving from G3, I assume that means a group 3 fax machine. Which makes me wonder if this thing's backwards compatible with group 2 or group 1. I don't know. Or receiving a fax. And yeah, this is missing the back plane for the printer, so I just made one out of a out of coat hanger wire. Okay, here it comes. I enjoy the flatulent noises it makes. All right, yay. And with that, we just received a facsimile. Here in my own living room on a 27 year old fax machine. How cool is that? And you can see, aside from the uh, thermal paper having age-related wear, it prints pretty darn well. It's certainly perfectly legible. 2004 is the copyright on this, and you can see it has the old HP logo, and back when they had that theme with the plus symbol and such. I don't know if that email address still works. But yeah. So HP has this uh, little service that's still running today and I think it's very cool. I'm going to show you another cool uh, number that you can send faxes to if you have no useful thing to do with your fax machine. There's a website called Faxtoy, faxtoy.net. And you literally just, um, it gives you the phone numbers. They have two phone numbers you can fax to. One of them's toll free. And you can literally just uh, send a fax from your fax machine and it'll show up on this website. Um, and if we go back far enough, and unfortunately in recent times, recent months, people have been using it to post political BS. But if we go back far enough, I recently, the first day I had this machine, I faxed a couple of uh, test faxes. Here we go, so the day I got this machine, I sent these text faxes. I did one with standard resolution. I did another one with super fine before I realized that super fine on this machine is proprietary, but it is slightly higher definition, so uh, it must have fallen back to fine resolution. And then I did one in half tone. And if you look at the half tone one, you can see a little bit of uh, grayscale there. So yeah, fax toy. Uh, it's a really fun way to test a fax machine and it's almost sort of social media like because you you know you can post whatever you want and some people post really fun stuff like uh, uh, a lot of people posted happy happy new year and stuff and uh, yeah so I figure uh, for a final demonstration or actually this will be my second to final demonstration. I'll take my insurance privacy promise here there's no personal information on this and uh, stick it in there I'll send it at uh, fine resolution 
And the number is 1-855-330-1239. And start. Oh, actually, let me cancel it. I'll actually initiate it as a voice call so you can hear what the uh, what a fax machine sounds like when it's trying to handshake. That's what it sounds like. It's saying, hear ye, hear ye, I'm a fax machine, send me your fax. And away we go. All right. All done. It's going to print out a transmission report. There it is. If I refresh the web page here, it should show up. And there it is. With a little bit of stretching on the bottom because the roller feed issue with the document scanner but there it is anyhow and uh, there's a look at what fax toy looks like I'm going to show one last uh, service here that you can use to play with a fax machine it's called fax zero and this uh, is the other way around with fax zero you can send a uh, fax to your fax machine you put in the sender information uh, you put in an email address because it'll send you an email to confirm that you want to fax it. And then the receiver information, that's who's going to get the fax. So uh, you'd put the phone number to call right there. And you can attach a file, um, docx or pdf. I assume that uh, txt files and the like will work too. You can put a little message that'll show up on the cover page. Um, Faxes often have a cover page. In fact, a lot of fax machines have a built-in cover page that'll send before the actual document just to say, hey, a fax is coming, here's how many pages it is, here's who it's from, here's who it's for, stuff like that. I have a document here that's a, a set of ITU standardized test charts, test charts rather, among a bunch of other information. There's a test chart. A bunch of other stuff here. So I'll take some of these pages and compile them into a PDF of their own. And uh, I'll use Fax Zero to send that to this machine. And we'll see what it looks like when it prints out. So there's three pages plus a cover page here, so four pages in total. Fax Zero lets you send three pages maximum. And you can send five faxes a day. That page has some personal information on it, so I can't show that.
Eight. Two more bait pages to come. Ooh, this one's a slow one. All right, all done. Well, that's what happens when you try to print photographs with a fax. If they had sent it as a halftone fax, then it would have looked a lot better, but there's no option for that. You get what you get with fax zero. But uh, yeah, there you go anyhow. Now, there are a couple other functions that I wanna go over here. Um, the first is polling. Polling is when you call another fax machine to tell it to fax something to you. So instead of sending a fax um, or receiving a fax from something, you're calling a fax machine, you're saying, hey, I want this fax, and then it, it, it sends the fax to you. So a person would have to load the document that you want into the remote fax machine, and then you would call that fax machine and uh, with the polling set and the fax, the remote fax machine would send you said document. So it's, it's almost like a, a collect fax, if you will. The transmit setting function lets you set two settings um, that affect what is displayed on the header of faxes that you send. The header is the top part of the fax. Like this example says the date and time and who it's from and stuff like that. So what you can do is you can set the header to display what the total number of pages are. So like if I'm sending a four page document and I, I tell it four pages, then in the header, rather than just saying page one or page two, it'll say page one of four, page two of four, etc. And then the other setting is you can choose a custom message to show in the header. So there's four settings here, A, B, C, and D, or you can just turn the message off. Um, listed here in the manual, A means confidential, B means urgent reply request, C means urgent please read, and D, you can punch in your own message. And it shows up right there. And there's the page count. So that's how that works. So I mentioned the help button earlier in the video. Let's uh, press that and take a look at the help page that prints out. So there it is, just uh, basic instructions for all the core functions, sending a fax, adding phone numbers to the uh, to the electronic phone book. This is really hard to manipulate because the paper's so curly. And then finally the settings menu is kind of convoluted. You really need the, the user's manual to uh, know what you're doing, which luckily is available online. 
The first setting when you press menu once is delayed transmission on or off. Delayed transmission means you can schedule this thing to send a fax. You just gotta load up your document in uh, up to 10 pages in the document feeder. And uh, just set a date and time that you, that you want it to send. And when that date and time arrives, it automatically calls the uh, number you set and transmits the fax. The reason for this would it would have been, um, and this would have been more applicable back in the day than now, but to uh, take advantage of uh, lower telephone rates, um, like uh, a telephone call like in the evening would cost you less than if you were calling in the middle of the day at peak hours. So um, if you were really cautious of your uh, telephone bill, um, you this feature would be very useful. Press menu again, and you've got a set of core functions. You can set the date and time. You can set things like your telephone number and stuff like that. Um, system, like you can enter what shows up in the in the header. And that's all that's accessible right off the bat. Um, if you want to access any other features, you have to press the pound key and then the appropriate code, like pound 23, and that gets you um, your custom uh, header message that you want to put and this is uh, what I put you can see there um, so yeah you have to press the pound key and, and a two or three digit code to, to do to get to any of the other settings luckily that's all documented in the manual as well and with that, that is all there is to show of the Panasonic KX-F250 telephone answering machine fax machine from 1992. Uh, this, I think, was a really good spend of $16. I really love this thing. Um, I just think it's really cool. It's, it's from the era when Panasonic was just at the top of their game with design and stuff like that. I think this is a very stylish looking device. And uh, it, it's really fun to use. I, you know, I, I find faxing kind of interesting. And although I don't have um, a lot of use for a fax machine, I, uh, to be honest, I kind of wish I could just give out my phone number on Twitter, but I'm scared people would use it to uh, find more personal information about me. Um, but whenever I have the opportunity to use the fax machine, it's certainly cool. And again, I, I, I love the answering machine and, and it's, a, it's even a cool telephone as well, even if I have to use an external caller ID box. Um, but yeah, really, really neat device. 27 years old and uh, still working perfectly fine today. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little bit too, maybe. And I'll see you in the next video.